welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License, my Thursday stream where we do a little bit of whatever I want. Today, we're going to be playing some Monster Prom. Welcome in, Koneko. Welcome in. All the things go wrong have gone wrong while you're playing this game. Only really last stream. Well, that's not true. The time before that, uh, the fire alarm kept going off. Hmm. Mm, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right, Koneko. <laughs> but this is the last Monster Prom stream. There is um, clearly a lot of content in this game, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm going to keep playing it, but after today, it's going to be off stream. We are going to be playing it on stream one more time today. We're going to be working on getting some more Steam achievements. We're going to be doing some more fun, silly voices. Um, it's going to be all good. It's going to be all good. Um, actually, I just realized I forgot to get the game open beforehand. So let me do that real quick. Let me, let me open it up real quick. So that, that is going for us. How are you guys doing today? How are you, Koneko? Hope you're having a really good Thursday. I'm having a pretty good Thursday. We um we had a Halloween our Halloween contest yesterday at work. So um There we go. Um, we had our Halloween contest at work. So in the pre-COVID times, we would do this every year, but this is the first time since since the pandemic that we've done it. But anyway, we decorate our whole like cube areas. We uh, all like have group costumes. And finally, my team won. Our goal this year was to beat the this other team that had won three years in a row because they have the most employees. And before that, they had a legit artist who would paint these like massive like murals and dioramas and things for them. She's not on their team anymore. They still have the most people, but we won. We won. <laughs> uh, horse riding group decided to go to a fun event together. So Saturday, we're going to dress halloween -y. Yes! <gasps> Koneko, I'm so excited. Oh, I have a question for you, actually, Koneko. The word Saturday reminded me. I'm kind of really thinking about um, instead of streaming on the... Thursday evenings, because weekday evenings is starting to become a problem. I'll explain it all later. But I'm kind of starting to think about streaming on Saturdays and Sundays. So moving artistic license to Sundays. It would be the same time slot as the Saturday time slot, like 12, 12 o'clock Eastern. Um, but I'm kind of thinking of like uh, weekday evenings are maybe not the best idea. So I'm thinking about maybe for November, testing it out, trying it out, streaming on Saturday and Sunday instead. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Would you would you be are you there on Sundays? I know you're busy Saturdays with your writing group. But yeah, what's been happening is like for whatever reason, because it's on Thursday and because we actually have a time limit where I want to go start streaming, there's always some kind of weird disaster with dinner where it's not ready. Or we order something and they get the order totally wrong. Or and they have to redo it or like just something happens every time where dinner is going to be a problem and then we have to choose like what the heck we're going to do um, so that I can go stream. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous and unnecessary. So that's why I'm kind of thinking of moving it like weekends or weekends are so much more free. Like there's so much more uh, that I can do and uh, it not be interfering with anything else I'm trying to do you know, like eat dinner. Um, I'm there on Sunday so I could check in. Yeah. Chore duty on Sundays. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Saturdays is my chore day. I take a break from chores to stream and then I go back to doing chores. <laughs> Saturday's big chore day for me. But hey, you could put in an earbud and I could keep you company while you do chores. But anyway, okay. All right. Let's get started, shall we? Let's get started with a personality quiz. We always like to start our Thursday stream, start artistic license with a personality quiz. And today we are doing perform a ritual to see who you conjure. This seemed appropriately Halloween-y. So here we go. You guys can do it too. We're going to perform rituals and see who we conjure. Let's go. All right. Where are you doing your spell? Oh, in my house, somewhere outdoors, in a cemetery for the vibes, in someone else's house. Ha! <laughs> in Agora, I guess. What is Agora? What's Agora? I don't know what Agora is. I haven't decided yet. Maybe my dad's place. I don't know. <laughs> I'm definitely doing my spell in my house. That's where I'm comfy. So that's where we're going to do spells. What's Agora? I'm going to Google this. What is Agora? A public open space used for assemblies or markets. 
Greek for plaza. Oh, okay. So it's where like Greek people would do. Okay. I understand. I understand now. I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess that's where they do them in, in Greek plays or something. That would make sense, I guess, then why it would be on this quiz. But no, we're doing it in my house. We're doing it in my house. Okay. When you are, when are you doing your spell? Okay. Whenever I get around to it, I guess I'm doing it right now, actually. High noon, midnight, 3.33 p.m. at night for the vibes. I said the ancient Greek in high school, AMA. Ah, thank you, Koneko. We actually did do a, an ancient Greece unit, um, but it was in elementary school. It was a long time ago. Um, it was as part of like, because I was part of the gifted program. So that was like our gifted unit program unit one year was Greek. It was really fun. Anyway, I'm doing it at 3.33 p.m. So that's when all the best spells happen. What are you using for your spell? Herbs and stuff. Maybe some goat milk. These fingernails I lovingly clip from my dead grandmother's left hand. Lovely. Human hair. Animal parts. Don't ask me what kind. I do not know. Bats, blood, cat's claws, that kind of thing. I'm dr I'm going to drown a bird in wine and see what happens. Oh, my gosh. Um, I don't. This all sounds like really gross to me. <laughs> um, I don't know, except for maybe the blood and claws. Like, that sounds OK. But I think like realistically, we're using herbs and stuff and some goat milk. I did like actually translating, translating parts of the Iliad for my finals. Wow. Oh, that's really advanced, Koneko. Oh, that's so cool. Um, I never learned any Greek except for the alphabet, of course. At one one point in time, I could say the whole alphabet. Um, not anymore. But <laughs> uh, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, alpha. Beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta. Maybe iota comes next. Iota, capital lambda, mu, psi, omicron, phi, something, something, omega. I don't know. Oh, I, I think I got parts of it right, but something like that. What else are you using in your spell? The healing power of love. Violence. Honk. I guess, I guess you, reader, they're using you. All of my hopes and dreams. It's no big deal, though. Raw power ecologically friendly glitter glitter oh i can't believe glitter is an option yes we're using glitter <laughs> i still have my dictionary so i could probably translate stuff if i tried what oh that's so cool how many languages do you know koneko say some magic words um abracadabra it's fun to stay at the ymca you open your mouth and somehow the drum solo from the in the air tonight by phil collins comes out oh my god you're the dancing queen, young and sweet, only 17. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu. Nu, I miss nu, psi, omicron, phi, oh, rho, sigma, tau, epsilon, phi, chi, psi, omega. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I had chunks of it still. I had chunks. I feel like that's not too bad, considering I, this was like mm, somewhere between third and fifth grade. I can't remember what, what grade it was, but I, I remember the school. And that school, I went to third, fourth, and fifth grade. Um, if you don't love me now, you'll never love me again. I can still hear you saying you would never break the chain. Ma, ooh, oh, <laughs> I don't want to die. Sometimes I wish I'd never been born at all. Okay. Um, we're doing, we're, we're screaming about love. Yeah, we're screaming about love. Break the chain. Okay. All done. How do you feel? I don't know if I'm cut out for this whole magic thing, to be honest. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Okay, Hermes. Oh, I got Hermes. Congrats. You got the god of magic. Kind of a power move, to be honest. I love that for you. Oh, I didn't realize this was summoning like Greek gods. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Okay, Hermes, Dionysus, Hecate, Eros, Osiris, or Typhon are the options. Wow. Interesting. I guess most people get Hermes. I got Hermes too. Interesting. Two languages, Dutch and English, two decent German and Old English. You also got Hermes. Twinsies. Four read only Latin, Ancient Greek, Old Irish, and Medieval. Well, that is very impressive, Koneko. That is very impressive. I'm fluent in one, which is English. I can do decent in Chinese and Spanish, um, but not really. It's more like a, a, situationally, I can do okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. In Spanish, I can only do the uh, kind of Spanish they speak in like Latin America, not Spanish, Spanish. It's a little, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Okay. Go back to the webcam for a second. So today's stream is 
sponsored by Magic Spoon. Thank you so much, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring today's stream. You can use my code to get $5 off of some Magic Spoon. Today is our the last stream that we're doing for Magic Spoon sponsorship. So we're going to try the last cereal, Fruity. We've tried peanut butter, we've tried cocoa, and we've tried Frosted so far. I was not a fan of Frosted. I told you guys that. I thought it was boring. But actually, the husband and the roommate tried it afterwards. And the husband really liked it. He does not have a sweet tooth, okay? He does not like sweets. And I think that's why he liked the Frosted, because it got had like kind of a sweet flavor without actually being very sweet. So he liked it, actually. It was his favorite so far. But we're going to open the Fruity, and we'll try that. So we'll do that about halfway through stream today. I've been wanting to learn how to read Hebrew because it's a very cool language, but it's very hard to never quite find the time for it. Yeah, I don't know anything about Hebrew, really. Um, but it looks cool, like visually, when you see it written. Looks cool. All right, let's turn the music up. All right, so we have gotten denied by Liam and by the snake girl who I can't remember her name now. The capitalist girl. Um, and we have dated Scott the wolf boy. Um, we've dated the ghost girl. And we've dated the fire guy, Damon. And then we've got a secret ending with Miranda. I think that was her. The fish princess. Um, so that's where we are. So... We are... The music's loud? Okay. How's that? Is that better? Is that more balanced? That looks better. You're right. That did look loud. Okay. So, we're going to try for a different ending than what we've already gotten before. Um, we've already seen all of this, so we're just going to... We're just going to skip, skip, skip. Skip, skip, skip. We like playing her. This girl. But we're going to put in my name. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Couldn't hear me over the music. Oh, I was just recapping the endings we've gotten so far. So we're gonna try to get we're gonna try to get different endings. So we can get some more denials, we can get some more dates. So we haven't gotten the actual prom ending with either Miranda, Liam, or this girl right here. So we'll try for one of the three of actually going to prom with them. We're gonna try. We're gonna try. But if not, maybe we'll get another rejection. We'll see. All right, stupidest pop quiz ever. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Okay, yes. Let's start. Okay. With the booty. <laughs> You're elected president for a day. What is the first law you pass? One dollar bills now include a picture of me with the inscription, beware too much awesomeness. My presidency might last a day, but my fame will last forever. You can deduct taxes by writing sonnets instead. Amount of taxes deducted are calculated based on the beauty of the sonnets. Trivia fact, presidents don't pass laws. So is this a trick question or are you just being an idiot? Why does this answer have to ruin my fun? And we learned, we've learned from some recent presidents that actually you kind of can with signing executive orders. Yes, the next president might just undo it, but still do that we've learned it anyway we're gonna do sonnets we're gonna do some sonnets <clears throat> which is the coolest mythological creature <laughs> the invisible hand of the free market um a sphinx who's super turned up and ready to party she wraps all her riddles i think this is what we picked before i like that one too weird creature i drew when i was six which is clearly super derivative from other mythological creatures but it's super cool and it's my oc and my spirit animal okay but anyway i like the i like the sphinx the wrapping sphinx Yo, yo. Okay. Um, the world will end tomorrow. What will you do today? It's okay. We invented the apocalypse to take care of the overpopulation of commoners. That must be the Miranda answer. We could pick that. Nobody ends the world but me. I'll end the world today. I'll finish my novel, which whoever comes after the end should know my legacy. 100 push-ups. No, 200 push-ups. I always party as if there were no tomorrow, so who cares? They always tell you the world is ending. I'll profit on other people's hysteria. This is definitely what's her face, the snake girl. 
Now I want to include a rapping sphinx in a story somewhere. Unfortunately, rapping is not a thing in my fantasy world. But Koneko, it could be. I mean, it's just spoken word poetry. And I know your fantasy world has poetry. So maybe you just have like this poet that's got this new form of speaking their poetry. They're like trying to do a new thing. Yeah? Yeah, I think you could do it. I think you could figure it out. I believe in you. Because it's a really cool idea. Okay, um, we're going to go with the Miranda answer, I think. Because we haven't, because with her, we got a secret ending. We didn't go to prom or get rejected. So we're, so I'm pretty sure. Yes, that's her. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go. Kitty, how's it going? Welcome in, friend. He's a spicy book with a hot boss sphinx. He's magic, of course. Oh, sexy and magic, my favorite. Okay, so for the um, for the for the things. What am I trying to say? Oh yeah, for the um, achievements. We can either do an outdoors run or a gym run. I think we're gonna do an outdoors run because that's where the parties happen. So we're gonna, we're gonna do an outdoors run. Okay, that day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares, it's a rad party. You gain plus two fun, fuck yeah. I got Dionysus in the quiz. Uh-oh, if you don't hear back from me in three to five business days, I'll just assume you've been transmogrified, all right. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. All right. You see Damien and Miranda with their heads in their hands. They look glum. You ask them what's up. Oh, uh, you're boned. Was that his voice? His voice is like low and growly. Oh, uh, you're boned. Something like that. I do not know what this boned means, but I'm not optimistic about our chances on the upcoming exam. <sighs> It's not fair. I shouldn't have to fail the test just because I spent all week in a really brutal mosh pit instead of going to class. And I did study. I had my servants read the entire textbook twice. Uh, but for some reason, my servants are not allowed to take the test for me. Well, there's only one thing left to do. Chop up the teacher and melt his body in acid. Damien's my favorite so far. He's so unlikable. And yet, and yet, Kitty. And yet. No, there's got to be another way. Doesn't there? Okay, easy. Just lobby the government until they remove the class from the entire school system. You don't need to murder your teacher over something like this. Just burn down the entire school. Okay, that's obviously the Damien answer, so here we go. Oh, majestic. Oh, yes, of course. My father has many excellent lobbyists in cryo freeze for just such occasions. Why are they in cryo freeze? Mm -hmm. Because if allowed to live freely, they would pose an untold threat to the survival of the species. I think. It was Daddy's decision in any case, and Daddy knows best. The lobbyists do their job so effectively that the government not only cancels the class, but erases all memory of it from everyone's brains. You got no idea what you just unlearned, but you did gain plus two fun and plus one boldness. Fuck oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Kitty, I have a question for you. I asked Koneko. I'm seriously thinking about not doing uh, regular evening streams anymore and moving artistic license to Sunday afternoon, like a, like a starting at 12, like I do with artistic license. What do you think? Would you watch on Sundays? Okay. Let's go find, let's go find her table. Here we go. As usual, Miranda sits before her immaculate array of carefully arranged silverware. Damien predictably is examining her biggest night. So this is the one for killing people, right? What? Good heavens, no! This is the butter dagger. It would be unseemly to use it on me. So what then? Am I supposed to use this scrawny-looking knife to kill a dude? No, no, no. If you simply must kill someone mid-meal, it is customary to use the fish knife. This is Merfolk port silverware, after all. That tiny thing? I might as well wait for my victim to die of old age. That is usually how it is done in the kingdom, yes. That or poison. This is ridiculous. Yo, you there. Which knife would you use to kill a guy? And I don't mean the fish knife. Uh, the fish knife, the spoon. What, you need blades to kill people? Ah! 
<laughs> okay, Damien seems to really like it when you're mean to him, because this is obviously the Damien answer. You know, the fish knife is agreeing with Miranda. So, like, what? <laughs> okay, the fish knife. I said not to, but you said, Ugh, I'll shoot you with knives if you use for murder. Damien picks up the big scary knife he wanted to use in the first place and lunges at you. You pick up the fish knife. Yes, defend my honor. Make sure to hold the knife with pinky extended. What? How did you disarm me? I'm normally the best at stabbing. Fuck me. I guess the fish knife really is the best for murder after all, huh? One must never doubt a princess in matters of silverware, my dear. Miranda is so impressed with your prowess in combat and silverware, she awards you her napkin as a token. I'm always out on Sunday, so I'd rarely get to see it, but I'm sure there's a chill day for a lot of people who might not have Thursday night. Ah, okay. Let's go. Understood. Good to know. Okay, uh, we've got shop already. Okay, shop kitty. In the outdoors. Hey, stranger. Let's face it, you're probably going to end up losing your money in some stupid way anyway. Why not spend it here first? It's called just being smart. Okay, so this would get us an event ending. I guess this would get us an event ending too, because they say event. I'm kind of like learning how this game works a little bit. Um, so if we do that, we're like guaranteed an ending we haven't seen. But I don't know, then we're wasting a lot of time on Miranda. I feel like we should instead do the gift that keeps on giving. Okay, let's do this. Catch you later. I know the composition is not that great and the color palette lacks depth, but fuck you. It's a gift. Hasn't quoted dick in a box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Khajiit wears um if you have coin. <laughs> not 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 to me, not in this stream, but I'm sure someone has. Oneko, that's a good joke for her. All right, back to the outdoors. That day during recess, you started a- Oh, okay, half hour rave again. Oh, at one point, Yon the small- Juan, the small magical Latino cat, flips on a banana peel. You start to laugh at him. He asks you to stop, but you don't. You laugh so hard at him that you somehow steal plus two fun from him. Hooray! <laughs> I guess the best fun is stolen. In the wake of all of that, you overhear Miranda and Polly discussing a party! <laughs> Oh, Polly, I'm terribly excited for your upcoming party. Yes! Oh, yeah, it's gonna be sick! Hey, speaking of which, you like the money, right? How about picking up some party favors? Oh, I'd be delighted. How many balloons should I purchase? I don't care. Just make sure you got enough nitrous oxide to fill them all. Mm, what's nitrous oxide? Is that something land dwellers breathe? <laughs> well, it's pretty much all I'd breathe if that's what you're asking. Hmm. I don't know about that. How about cake? What kind of cake would you Lame. like? C cake? I think you're mispronouncing cocaine. No, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced cake. I like mine with pink frosting. And I like mine injected into my eyeballs. And speaking of eyeballs, I don't think we're really seeing eye to eye right now. Too true. Perhaps our friend Karen can suggest a mutually agreeable use for my vast riches. Yeah, Polly, honest, like, we're on episode four, okay? I've played this game for quite a lot of hours, and Polly is the best. She's so fun. She's so stupid. She's so, like, she's just, she's amazing. Okay, you should get Polly a pinata. You don't want anyone to get hurt, though, so the only really safe thing to do is fill it with nice soft bags of cocaine. Miranda, you like clowns, right? I know this website that lets you hire clowns, firefighters, doctors, and tuxedo guys. It's called definitelyonstrippers.com and it's 100% legit. Okay, does Miranda like strippers or cocaine? I feel like this has got to be, this is the Polly answer. So this has got to be the Miranda answer, right? Like, that's got to be. It's got to be. Process of elimination. They look unhappy. You pull up def definitelynotstrippers.com on Miranda's phone so she can see for herself. 20 minutes later... Hello? Miri? I'm sorry, were you talking to me? I seem to have been distracted by the photographs on my phone here. What were we talking about? Clouds? Yes. Fine. Order a hundred of them. And another hundred for the party. Oh, she did like it. Yes. That website isn't real and I'm surprised. Me too. You typed in the URL and it doesn't exist. Nobody's bought it. Or nobody, if whoever owns it isn't using it, I guess. 
Uh, later at the party, you get to see those buff clowns fit into a lot of things besides tiny cars. Plus two creativity and plus one fun. Fuck yeah. Let's go. All right, where's our girl? There she is. You arrive at Scott and Miranda's table to find Scott happily chowing down while Miranda stares horrified at her tray. Oh, thank you so much for the follow, friend. We have anonymous followers on here, so if you would like to say hello, I will be happy to thank you by name. Welcome in, demon fighters. Welcome in. Welcome in. I'm a variety streamer, and um, and today we're streaming Monster Prom. We're doing silly voices. It's a lot of fun. Um, what's wrong with Miranda? Yuck! Isn't it obvious? Right here on my tray, fish sticks. <laughs> yeah, fish stick Fridays. Isn't it great? It's not great, Scott. The fish are my subjects. This is clearly the work of the air people. Uh, what? Air people? Yes. You know who of the air people? The Merfolk's most hated rivals? Don't you read the news? That was me, Lol. I think I know you from... Hey, hell yeah. Welcome in. New year, new friends. Um, We are new friends, yes. Uh, that's that's the raid train that I can't tell you guys details about, but that we're gonna be doing next year. I will be able to tell you details soon. Watch my Twitter for that. Um, yeah, sure, because I totally know how to read. What? Well, I must insist that you cease eating those fish sticks immediately. It is high treason. Ah, oh. oh, but I've been looking forward to fish stick Friday since since last fish stick Friday. Are you sure I can't eat any? He's asking Miranda while holding a fish stick really close to his mouth, but you feel like you've got a better answer to settle this argument. You blurred out. I don't know how you keep those voices straight. It continues to be great. Thank you so much, Kitty. The answer is practicing very hard and watching other streamers that do this and um, doing my best to, to live up to them. <laughs> uh, haven't you heard Scott fish sticks make you worse at sports? They contain ball drop and ner nerdo flavin? Oh no. Fish sticks contain absolutely no fish. It's all garden snails and food grade plastic. Scott can eat as many as he wants. Uh, okay. I think this is the answer that's gonna make Miranda happy and make him stop eating fish sticks. Yes, okay. Oh no! Not nerdo flavin and ball dropina, drop and all. Those are two of the worst ones. Do the air people want me to be bad at sports? <laughs> of course they do, Scott. The air people hate sports and sportsmen. It's one of the most loathsome things about them, aside from their feathers and their socialism. <laughs> well then, I'm not gonna eat any more fish sticks ever again. Fish stick Friday? More like fish stick. Fish stick. Friday? Yeah, man. I gotta tell the rest of the wolf pack about this. Scott runs off to spread the anti air people propaganda, and Miranda gives you the most regal smile. <laughs> she really did, go Neko. She really did. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, of course, she would be against socialism, I guess, since she's part of the monarchy. Um. <laughs> There's no excuse for her. It's she's lucky. She's pretty. Okay, let's go outdoors again. Okay, we're gonna do it. We're a half hour raid. Everything is fine. Okay, this is the one we read before. Okay, yes we know. Yes, 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 yes. Party to remember plus two. Oh, I think that one was slightly different, but it was still still one. But he taught us to dance. I should have read it. Oh well. Um, you're happily examining the shittiest crayon drawing you've got from the store, thinking about the kind of frame will enhance its childish colors and style composition. When Scott approaches you, oh, hey, the picture unlocks something. Hey, Karen, is that a picture? I love pictures. <laughs> Coach says one picture is worth a thousand words, and there's so many words I love, like pizza and good and boy. So a picture must be even better. What's your picture saying, bro? It looks like a little stick person holding hands with two big stick persons. And there's a house, and the sun has hair. You patiently explain to Scott that it's a picture of a family and that those are solar rays, not hair. Awesome, bro. Oh, so those two big bros are protecting the little bro? I get it. What? No, you tell Scott that it's two big stick figures are parents. Parents? Wow, so that's what parents look like. I totally have some parents, but, well, I never actually got to see them. That's okay, though. Once a year, they sneak into our house in the middle of the night and leave me Christmas presents because I'm a good boy and they love me. 
Bye, Koneko. Thank you so much for joining us today. Happy to have you here, as always. And I will see you later, friend. Oh, what's his voice? I don't remember. I don't know if we've met him before. I feel like we met him once, but I don't remember. Anyway, huh, you baby. You still think parents leave Christmas presents in the middle of the night? That's a myth. It, it is? What? Yeah. Everybody knows it's all Christmas gifts are delivered by Satan Claus and feared to have some Vader with lobster hands and a cookie finish. Oh, but my parents think I'm a good boy. Oh. Just, <laughs> I just read it literally. Anyways. Aaron, are you just going to stand there and let those douchebags ruin Scott's instance? Distract him. Whoa, you know this is a serious situation if it's causing fear to show him. Quick, divert Scott's attention by... Um, starting a discussion on the history and development of jazz as a musical art form, making a silly face. Obviously, he's going to be more distracted by a silly face. Look, Scott, it's time you face the truth about your parents. They're... Wait! Look at that funny face Karen's making. Scott, this is really serious. Holy shit. <laughs> that face is hilarious. How's she even doing that? I could do it, too. You just gotta go, like... Um, uh, uh, woof. I can't do it. My face isn't strong enough. I'm gonna have to hit the gym and do some chin-ups and facelifts. Bye bye. Good thing we weren't talking about anything important. Otherwise, I'd feel bad about leaving this. Later, pals. <laughs> Whew, that was close. Nice work, Karen. As for you, Wolf, what the hell were you thinking? Sorry, I guess emotionally harassing our little cousin is our way of coping with our unstable mm -hmm. home life. But you gotta admit, it's weird that Scott's been living with us and our grandma his whole life and still hasn't realized our parents aren't coming back. Yes, I can relate to that. And maybe it would be better for him to accept mm -hmm. I just don't think he's ready. You're right. Thanks for helping to keep the lie alive, Karen. You're a true bro. For your good deed and your incredible facial flexibility, uh, plus two creativity and plus one charm. Fantastic. Let's go! Party, party, party! Okay, half hour raid. You're casually chatting with Juan the small magical Latino cat. You start telling him a hilarious story of what happened last summer at Monster Camp. You know which one? The one involving the beehive and the blow-up doll of the president, the penguin mask, and the mystery of the Goblin King. Slowly, lots of people start joining you to hear the story, too. By the time you say where the Goblin King was, a hundred people or so burst into hysterical laughter. You turn on the mobile app that captures the laughter and it turns into plus two fun. I made them laugh. It is my goal in life. You're gazing dreamily at Miranda when a flash of otherworldly light blinds you. When your vision clears, you see a great rift has opened in time and space, and standing in the Come middle of it love. <laughs> is me, Prince of the Otherworld, and I'm here to fulfill an ancient prophecy. Oh, how majestic! A prophecy? How exciting and regal! What sort of prophecy is it? It's a prophecy of love. Oh boy, here it comes. Legends foretell a great beauty with the hair of an angel and the scales of a fish. A beauty who I am destined to marry. <gasps> but that, that sounds like a perfect description of me. Could it be that I'm the greatest beauty described in the prophecy? Well, yes, that's sort of what I was trying to imply. Now come with me to my realm where we may plan a magnificent wedding. You can't let him get away with this, but that prophecy is hard to argue with. The only argument you can think of is the hair of an angel hawk. Clearly, Miranda has the hair of a goddess. What about these fish skills? I glued <laughs> this to a handful of angel hair pasta. I think she wants to be called a goddess. Okay. Not so charming. Not what? Why wouldn't she want to be called a goddess? The hair of a goddess, you say? And which goddess would that be? Aphrodite? Goddess of beauty? Or Felicula? Goddess of bad dandruff! <laughs> Angels have uniformly lovely hair, you know. Goddesses decidedly do not. Milady, I think this coarse oaf was attempting to pay you a backhanded compliment. I suggest you pay her the backhanded backhand. Miranda takes the prince's advice. Just as school security appears to chase him off for hitting on high schoolers. <gasps> what? He leaves Miranda with his interdimensional calling card, though, and she promises to consider his proposal. Blast. Minus two smarts and minus one charm. Oh, no. Sad. All right. Here we go. Let's go. Lunchtime. Where is she? Here she is. 
You notice Liam looking disgruntled, which is his default. So whatever, it seems like Miranda is pretty upset too. Better check it out. Liam, why are you typing on your phone so angrily? Did your phone offend you in some way? Why are you mad at it? You seem to be in an 8.5 on the frowny Liam scale. What? The frowny Liam scale. Normally I can tell how people are feeling from their faces, but you seem to be frowning most of the time. So I created a chart to measure your frowniness. Miranda pulls out a notepad and displays a series of doodles of Liam's frowniness. They're not super accurate, but they are super adorable. Oh my god. <laughs> what if I ship it? I'm not angry at my phone. My so-called frowniness is caused by my, a heinous error. I specifically asked that my creature cream brulee be extra crispy so it truly popped with my hashtag massacre mon momentgram filter. Momentgram. That's the word. Instead, they burnt it to a crisp, rendering it unphotographable. Monsters deserve to know what they're getting into if they choose to eat this at the cafeteria, so they can choose to take their business to a different establishment. And so, I'm writing a scathing Welp review. Liam, you can't do that! If they shut the cafeteria down, the school's kitchen staff will lose their jobs. Did you know that peasants have to do labor to make living wages? They don't simply have an unlimited store of gold. I was shocked when I first found this out. Of course you were. If the kitchen staff wanted to earn their wages, they should have been better at their jobs. I am simply the merchant of truth. No, you're the merchant of poop. Your royal sophistication sign shines through. Look, ask Karen. Her taste may tend towards the mainstream, but surely she can see this subpar cafeteria must be exposed. Don't be ridiculous. Karen is surely more compassionate than that and would gladly help me save the cafeteria. Again! <laughs> Again? Gosh, it's hard to keep track of your misadventures at this shit show of a school. Still, you'll help if you can. I actually would help in this situation. Liam, no. Uh, Miranda can't undermine Liam's admittedly talented criticism alone. This will take an army of homeless people we pay to write positive well for music at the cafeteria until we eclipse Liam's. Liam, one lone voice simply can't shut down the cafeteria, at least the voice of a high schooler. Let's get a renowned food critic to write a Pulitzer-worthy expose to be published in the most widely read periodicals. Oh no, this one clearly. Why, of course, this plan involves two of my most favorite strategies, gathering an army and outsourcing work to the disenfranchised. If it involves torture and suppression of dissidents, it would hit all of my favorites, but there might still be time for that later. I don't even have a response to this. You go get the vast homeless population who wander the woods near the school, don't ask, and convince them the cafeteria is a trendy new restaurant that sells food for the most valuable currency of all. Positive Welp reviews! Turns out people are pretty gullible when they're starving, so they flock to the cafeteria in droves and start writing spectacular reviews on their phones. Because now homeless people have phones of their own, it seems they kept all that unwanted blackberries. Remember blackberries? Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Miranda Vanderbilt says principal giant spider bursting into the cafeteria with an eight le with eight legged panache. I did not know that their principal was a spider. The, I just learned this now in this game. It, it, it never stops surprising me, no matter how many playthroughs. Stop bringing droves of homeless people into our cafeteria. The principal giant spider, it was absolutely vital to the vitality of the school. You said that the last five times. You can't solve all your problems by manipulating homeless people. Notorious PGS storms out, but Miranda looks perfectly chipper. Oh, he may pretend to be upset, but I think the subtext was pretty clear. Thank you, Miranda and Karen, for saving the entire school like the beautiful heroes you are. That's 100% a lie, but Miranda called you beautiful. It's a win. Let's go. All right, party time. <clears throat> You're talking talking to Juan, the small, magical Latino cat, and he tells you that you won't ever be as fun as Bob the Scary Clown. You accept the challenge. You go straight to Bob, stab him several times, open his bleeding chest, and eat some of his guts in order to consume his fun. Really? You think that's how it works? Well, it is. Plus two fun. <laughs> the heck? Oh, here we go. Later, you head by the local pizza parlor to help Vera collect her protection money. You notice Scott moping around outside. Oh, this is more of the picture. Hey, you. 
Hey Scott, what are you doing outside the pizza parlor? Don't you normally prefer to be inside the pizza parlor? Well, it all started when I did some research into wolf, mummies, and daddies. Ah! It turns out wolf parents are responsible for providing food to their children. Then it hit me. The pizza delivery guy provides almost all of my meals. And you know what that means. I know what you think it means. It means the pizza delivery guy is my mother. What? Or maybe the pizza parlor itself is my mother. It's hard to be sure. Either way, I came here to reunite with my long lost parents and also get some free pizza, hopefully. But they threw me out. Apparently, I'm not the first person to claim to be related to one of their employees in order to get free pizza. I don't want to be separated from my mama though. Please help me. Hmm, keeping Scott's misguided hopes alive may be trickier than I expected, but I just don't think he's ready for the truth. Do you think you could look at the restaurant to give him a free pizza or say it's from his mother? Free pizza? <laughs> That's right. Fuck it, you got flexible relationship with the truth anyway, and Scott seems so sincerely invested in this, so you do the only reasonable thing. I'm um, convinced the proprietors that you're a time traveler from the future and giving free pizza is the only way to stop the pizza uprising. <laughs> Act like an entitled piece of shit until they give you free pizza. No way. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. If it's the right answer, I'm sorry, Scott. We're doing this one. Yeah, I don't care if you made it. Wait, have you considered that this is an extremely stupid thing? Nope. You burst into the kitchen at the pizza parlor, screaming about the pizza uprising and how you've traveled back in time to stop it. Whoa, 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 says the head chef, holding up her hands to placate you. How the fuck do you know about the pizza uprising? Too late, you heard the telltale click that indicates that the kitchen staff has locked the doors. From the wood fire pizza oven, you hear hideous boiling sounds and the enormous sentient pizza smell spills from its fiery maw. None can know of our plans for world domination, it gurgles. Dispatch the indiscreet time traveler immediately. You, the cook obediently seizes you and attempts to drown you in a vat of molten cheese. Luckily, you're able to eat your way out. Less luckily, you're lactose intolerant. Minus two fun, minus one charm. Oh no. Oh no. I'm sorry, Scott. I tried oh, no. to get you free pizza, friend. I tried. I tried. You too, demon. We could have eaten pizza if I had chosen the other one. But no. <laughs> okay. All right, outdoors again. We have half hour break. You spot Juan, the small, Lati magical Latino cat who seems a bit sad. He explains to you that he's worried that they, you are so used to calling him Juan, the small, magical Latino cat, that now everyone defines him only by his size, magicality, ethnicity, and species. He's more than that. You correct him. You don't see him in such a simplistic term of convenient definition. It's just that there are around 23 other different Juans in the school, so adding all of that to his name is quite necessary. You tell him you'll never forget about him and the crazy adventures you both lived together in Monster Prom's prequel, Monster Middle School. You have a great time remembering those crazy stories, plus two fun. Oh, that's cute. I wonder if this is Juan the Magical Latino Cat right here in the drawing. As you wander around talking to yourself like a weirdo, you notice Miranda walking around talking to herself like a weirdo. She seems to be addressing an imaginary crowd. Hello, classmate. Oh, hello. I was just practicing my royal way for when I'm crowned prom queen. I feel that there's a lot to be learned before I ascend to the throne. La, da, da, la, da, da. Naturally, as a princess, I'm already great at wearing crowns, cute animal friends, quelling rebellions through excessive force, and singing sweetly. But I like administrative experience. I've never so much as issued a decree. I wonder what my first should be. You don't have the heart to tell her that the role of prom queen doesn't come with sovereignty. Maybe you should just give her some suggestions instead. Taxes! Taxes are fun. Paint every student pink. I want to choose this one. I don't care if it's wrong. I don't care if it's wrong. I want it. She doesn't like it. Pink? But why pink? Why not orange? Or gold? Or lavender? You start to tell her that it could be any color she wants, but she continues talking over you. I might as well just set them on fire and turn them all black. Disgraceful. What good would that do? What would I use my subjects be? What use would my subjects be to me? They were all charred to a crisp. What a horrid suggestion. 
You try to rem remind her that you never said anything about setting anyone on fire. And that was all on her, but she's already haughtily storming off. Minus two fun, minus one creativity. We might get rejected by her. I had to choose pink, you guys. I had to choose pink. I had no choice. Okay? This was not an option. Not, not, not an option. Okay. The table you choose is quite crowded. Liam sits across from Miranda, who's flanked by two well-dressed servants. One of the servants cuts a slice of Salisbury steak and feeds it to the other. Seriously, Miranda, you have servants to chew your food for you? Disgusting! Of course not! That would be barbaric! The servant happily swallows the Salisbury steak. I have servants to eat for me. They're called eating serfs. Don't you have any? First of all, no. I don't eat food. Second of all, that totally defeats the purpose of eating. Aren't you worried about starving? Why would I be? My serfs get all the calories I need to stay fit and healthy. Enough. Ugh, I have no objective reason to care about this, but suddenly it's all I care about. Someone convince Miranda to stop this madness. Um, maybe you should start this madness, Liam. Imagine all the food you could take pictures of without having to eat it. <laughs> but Miranda, look at all the contented smile on the servant's faces. You think he's eating for you, but secretly he's eating for himself. <gasps> Oh no, oh no, okay. Oh no, Liam liked that one. I thought Liam would like the other one. Oh man, we're gonna get rejected. That's okay though. We gotta get those achievements too. No, can't be. Gordo, say it isn't true. But Gordo can't say anything because his mouth is full of delicious Salisbury steak. Salisbury steak, which he is obviously eating entirely for his own benefit. Traitorous dog. Do you want me to starve to death? Is that your plan? I think maybe he was just taking advantage of the fact that you don't understand how food works. Taking advantage of me? Scoundrel! Burpee, eat Gordo for me at once! The two serfs look at each other, then stuff as much food as they can into their mouths before fleeing the cafeteria. Alas, how will I ever get my recommended daily and now allowance of nutrients now? You could try eating? Myself? But... You and Liam have a ton of fun laughing at Miranda as she learns how to eat food for apparently the first time in her life. So Miranda doesn't need to eat either. I guess mermaids don't need to eat. I did not know this, but I guess. Okay. Party, party, party. Hell yeah. Can you spot Juan, the magical Latino cat who seems a bit sad? He explains, oh, this is the same one we saw. Yeah. No, no, we hung out with you in middle school. You're super cool. Miranda's not paying any attention at all to what's going on at the rave. She gazes out the window and sighs dreamily. Ah, uh, summer's almost here. Underwater skiing, ocean polo, brutally suppressing food riots in the public square. I can hardly wait. But I do feel dreadfully sorry for those who are not fabulously wealthy enough to enjoy the same summer pastimes I do. It's so sad. Wait, you're a poor, aren't you? What do you do during the summer? Do you play in garbage or or do you starve recreationally? Truly, what are your plans? I feel like I'm st still a little like loud. I'm just turning down the volume a little bit more on the music. Why, madame, I am insulted by your assumption. My family too possesses many fine estates. You haven't heard of them because they're in the sky. Oh, I can't say that. She hates sky people. Yep, I play in garbage. Come with me. You'll love it. Oh, I think this is the right one. The garbage. She hates sky people. She are, she's told us this previous thing. Okay, we're gonna go play in garbage. I must admit to being a bit taken aback that you're inviting me to literally play in garbage, but why did I enroll in this high school for monsters if I did not wish to be exposed to the dreadful hobbies of common folk? Lead the way, garbage hobbyist. Soon? Oh, how perfectly hideous. No wonder it was all thrown away. None of it is even encrusted in rubies. So this is how the other half amuses themselves. I must confess, it has a certain rustic charm. Now, do I set this wretched paisley couch on fire, or should I use an axe? I'm unfamiliar with your customs. You tell Miranda there's plenty of time to do both. When you're done, you're surrounded by a pile of charred smoking rubble. You were right. What a rush. I've never felt more alive. Same goes for you, except that was actually your house, not a garbage pile. Oh well, maybe you can use it as an excuse to sleep over at Miranda's place. Plus two fun and plus one boldness. <laughs> oh god. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, outdoors. 
Uh, yep, half hour rave. You're casually chatting with Juan, the small, magical Latino cat. You start telling him this hilarious story of what happened last summer at Monster Camp. You know the one. Okay, yes, we did read this. Yep, 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 plus two fun. You catch Miranda monologuing about her problems to no one. She often does this. It's like she's accustomed to having a royal scribe following her everywhere she goes. Oh, whatever shall I do about my army? We haven't had a proper war in months, and the soldiers are becoming ever so anxious. I tried sending the servants to give them tummy rubs, and even putting extra leaves and sticks in their cages, but they just kill the servants with the sticks. Mm -hmm. I never thought managing an entire branch of the military would be so challenging. How can I possibly keep my soldiers entertained? Divide them in half and make them fight a practice war. A thousand pinatas. I think maybe Miranda like really likes pinatas because there was another answer with pinatas and I didn't choose it and I was wrong. But maybe she like really likes pinatas. Yep, she loves pinatas. Okay. You know of my kingdom's living pinatas then? No? Then divine providence must have guided your suggestion. Each year, hundreds of peasants are required by law to volunteer to be stuffed with candy and suspended from ropes throughout the palace. Visiting dignitaries are invited to take a few ceremonial wax, but we always have more pinatas than we can use. I'm sure daddy would be happy to lend me a thousand pinatas to keep my army happy. A splendid idea indeed. There's no reason you should feel guilty about this at all. Plus two boldness and plus one smarts. Hey, my fun's really high from going out the outdoors this whole time. Let's go. All right, there's Miranda's table. You sooner, no sooner have you sat down the Damien and Miranda's table than a haunting melody fills the air. It's a melody of cold northern peaks, of cloying sweetness, of a supple bovine teat. The song of the ice cream wizard. He's here. He's here. I'm gonna eat so much ice cream and then I'm gonna puke on someone I don't like. Oh goodness, the ice cream wizard only comes but once per solstice during the hour of the ascendant pancake. You see an old dude in a floppy blue hat pushing a refrigerated cart with this shit magic printed on the side. We actually have seen this. Okay, we, we saw this when we were doing Damien's. Um, so we're just gonna go through it. Okay. Try the sugar blasted prince lips, beat him up and take all of his ice cream. I think we want to choose uh, the sugar blasted prince lips. Yes. But of course, I always have to find a prince to kiss me out of being a frog. Why not cut out the middleman? Prince lips, gross. I've already got a pair of those attached to my face. What? Where? Here, where my mouth is. Wait, Damien, you're a prince? But you hide it so well. Gee, thanks. But Miranda's not paying attention. She's already traded the ice cream wizard several gold ingots for a pair of sugar blasted prince lips. Oh my, I can chase the, taste the enchantment already. Miranda finishes the prince lips in three graphic smooches. Afterwards, her lips are pretty cold and she invites you to help warm them up. Okay, we're winning. We're winning. We can do this. Outdoors. That day during recess, okay, half hour away, if you're talking to Juan, the small magical Latino cat, when he tells you that she weren't ever as fun. Okay, we did read Bob the Scary Clown. Really, do you think that's how it works? Well, if it is, yep. Miranda, obvious, oblivious to everything that's happened, approaches you weeping. Disgraceful. Have you seen the news? The most dreadful thing has happened. The Lemurian monarchy has been overthrown. King Kraken no longer sits upon the throne of golden baby skulls. Those filthy revolutionaries are saying he stole their daughters and ate their sons and forced everyone to work for free in the uranium mines. So he made a few shrewd financial decisions. There's no reason to depose him. If some innocent kidnapping and slave labor was enough to get the peasants in an uproar, I shudder to think of my own kingdom. Do you think my people might resent being forced to hold up the corner of the palace where the foundation is crumbling? Do you think the 100% income tax and the random cannonballs we fire into the villages might be taken as something other than expressions of goodwill? But this plague of civil unrest infects my own domain? Oh, perish the thought! I am inconsolable! Console me! How might I safeguard my kingdom against the fate of good King Kraken? Uh, Del, replace all your subjects with mindless robots. I built a robot army a few months ago. I still have the plans. Give all your subjects belly rubs. Fishes love belly rubs. He did talk about belly rubs before, but I don't know if it was in a positive or negative way. I feel like she wouldn't like robots. I feel like she really likes 
having subjects, so I don't think this is the right answer. I think it's this one. How majestic. Nope, I heard the negative sound. How elegant, how humane, how cost effective. I'll implement it at once. But soon. Oh, the horror. The plan could not have gone more wrong. You see, to avoid the treachery of rubbing bellies myself, I conscripted a hundred thousand serfs to do it for me. But when the serfs saw the quantity of work facing them, they... I can hardly bring myself to say it. Unionized! Imagine how I must have felt imprisoning all of those serfs. Some of them were my very favorites. Well, as father says, princess must take responsibility for making other people take responsibility for her mistakes. What I mean to say is, I blame you for this. When some of the serfs escape from prison a few days later, they blame you too. Oh no. The beating they give you gives you negative two boldness and negative one fun. I guess belly rubs are bad. I guess belly rubs are bad. Okay, you guys. We're, we're, we're close to 7.30, so we're actually gonna pause the game for a moment. We're actually gonna pause the game for a moment. And, um, we're gonna have a little ad break. Let me just turn this down. There we go. Okay. All right, you guys. Here's what we're gonna do. We are going to try fruity. Okay, we're gonna try fruity. All right. Um. And uh, while I do that, well, first I have to go get the milk. Okay. So actually, let's do this. I'm gonna turn the music back up for a second. You guys can listen to the music while I go get the milk. And then when I get back, I will turn the music back down. Be right back, you guys. Okay, I'm back. All right. Um, we're almost out of this one, so I brought the other another milk too. All right. Now we're gonna turn down the volume. So, let's see. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, um, thank you so much to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this past month's episode of um, Artistic License. If you would like to get some Magic Spoon too, you can do so with my link in my code to get $5 off. Um, I do recommend it if you're somebody that likes uh, cereal but doesn't eat anymore because of the high sugar content because it is somehow uh, zero or super low sugar, but um, but pretty good. Like I really enjoyed the peanut butter flavor. I really enjoyed um, the cocoa flavor. I have to say I didn't enjoy the frosted flavor, but my husband who doesn't have a very big sweet tooth um, really, really enjoyed the frosted flavor, so I don't know. It's not bad, I guess. It just wasn't for me. All right, here we go. We're going to try fruity. Oh, oh, it already smells. Okay, that's another thing about these Magic Spoon cereals. They all smell amazing, and this one's no exception. Smells like... Smells like strawberries and lemons. Smells like a really good strawberry lemonade. Um, also, we measured it out when we did the first review, and about two cups is about what a person would actually eat. The serving sizes that they list here is one cup, but like, well, we measured it out. So anyway, here's what this one looks like. It's beautiful rainbows. Let's eat the rainbow. We actually did have enough in there. I don't need to open the other. I will need to put it back and also throw it in the trash. Okay. All right, you guys. Let's taste. Okay. Out of all the cereals, this one actually tastes like the most it's trying to mimic. It really, truly tastes, straight up tastes like Fruit Loops. I think this is my favorite one, you guys. They, no joke, made a zero sugar Fruit Loop somehow. Fifteen grams carbs, one's dietary fiber, zero sugars. Thirteen grams protein. It tastes like Fruit Loops. It tastes like Fruit Loops. No kidding. My mind is blown.
I was least interested in this one. It turns out it's my favorite. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. So, if you would like to support the stream tonight, a great way to do that is using my code. Um, all proceeds that I earn do go right back into the stream. Like right now, I'm working on some designs for um, a merch shop. So we're gonna we're gonna have some merch coming in November. Stay tuned. It'll be soon. Mm. This one's just like legit really good. I'm just like so shocked. Okay, I'm gonna put up the milk. I'll be right back. Turn the music back on for you. All right, be right back. I am back. It's actually good. My mind is blown. Okay. Time to date more monsters. Is this a repeat? You spot one, the magical Latino cat, or the small magical Latino cat, who seems a bit sad. He explains to you, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the same thing about all of his qualifications. Mm hmm, plus two, fine. You notice Damien and Miranda squatting on the grass, poking something with a stick. You rush over, hoping for a dead possum, but instead, you find them gathered around an entire tiny metropolis. Fucking metal. Check this shit out. It's our kingdom. We call it Small Topia. A tiny voice from the city shouts up at you. It's called West Pemberley and we're not a monarchy. I was just gonna burn it all with my magnifying glass, but I'm happy Miranda stopped me. It's good to be king. The tiny voice from the city says, we vote for our leaders in biannual elections. But we are facing a quandary. How to boost our kingdom's struggling economy? Yeah, the whole place has been facing an economic recession ever since a pigeon stole the hospital to build its nest. The tiny voice sa says, that red, that red guy stole the hospital and lied about it. I'm used to managing kingdoms that are significantly larger and much more underwater. I'm afraid I'm at a loss. Yeah, hey, how about you bring our royal advisor? Oh, you being our royal advisor. The base ship, but you can take whatever buildings you want. Hey, says the tiny voice. <laughs> Build a new hospital of popsicle sticks and hot glue. You know what always boosts the economy? War. I think I saw an ant hill over by the water fountains. Okay, Miranda loves war. Miranda loves war. Right? I didn't hear a chime. I, that's not, I, didn't hear a, 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 I didn't hear a note. The three of you instigate a war with the ants by leaving a trail of syrup between small topia and the ant hill? Oh no. Hell yes, this is awesome. They're gonna fucking kill each other. And the resulting war economy will eradicate your hospital troubles entirely. Oh, excuse me. Hey, what's going on down there? Are the ants sending... An ambassador? Yes, they seem to be signaling some sort of treaty. It says that both sides still recognize the true enemy lies elsewhere. Damien, why are they all looking at us? But before anyone can answer, the first small Topian missiles hit you in the face. You take constant fire from the tiny people's very small arms, while the ants swarm all over your bodies. You seriously underestimated the strength of the war economy. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Let's go. I'm eating my sadness. Okay. Lunch time. You find Liam artfully arranging his food while Miranda dilig diligently sorts her silverware. Neither of them is eating, obviously. 
Have you found it yet? I'm trying, Liam. But finding the perfect silverware for your cafeteria food pick is an art. What a science. How hard can it be? It's just silverware. Just silverware? And I suppose the food in your food pick is just food. No, it's a metaphor for urban consumption in a post-post-post-modern industrializing mega-society. Well, my silverware is a metaphor for... Silverware? Yes! Is that not enough? It's more than enough, but can we hurry it along? The lighting is perfect right away, and I don't want to lose it. You're a bit of a silverware aficionado yourself. Maybe you can speed up the selection process while simultaneously demonstrating your knowledge. Try the picture fork. It's the fork we're taking pictures of. Nothing conveys elegance and taste like a gloating spoon. Mmm. Picture fork? Oh, Liam liked that. I don't know. They both seem like good answers. The picture fork? Miranda, why didn't you suggest the picture fork? I don't know. It seemed too on the nose, and the fork does not belong on one's nose. But look at this fork. It's so vintage. Slightly tarnished silver. A pineapple fli filial? Mm, a pineapple filial? Yes, it was manufactured thusly by the palace Whitesmiths. Don't tell me that. It makes it less authentic. Just place it in the correct location for my food pick. Very well. The correct location is across the plate, as if left haphazardly while enjoying a delicious meal. So nonchalant. I love it. Liam's so impressed with your selection. He spends hours with you after lunch picking out filters. You miss class, but it's worth it. Well, that was unintentional. I don't know if Miranda's gonna accept our prom invitation. I think we might get another rejection. Let's go. Mm, same one. Okay. So the party achievement. Notice Liam and Polly taking a break from the rave. You dance over to join them. Hey, boo! Yeah, we were just talking about the insane music festival we're going to this weekend. You're going, right? Shit, you forgot to get tickets. They're probably all sold out now, and there's no way you can afford to pay a scalper. Obviously, you tell them you're going, though. You never let the truth get in the way of talking to hotties. Yes! I can't wait! All my favorite bands are gonna be there. Boo Radley, Imagine the Fucking Dragon, and Actual dead mouse? Those are great band names. Great bat band names. Personally, I'm most excited about Veggie Scales. Their lead guitarist is a cucumber. It's never been done before. Hello, friends. What are we talking about? Is it a grand ball? Oh, um, sort of. It's like a grand ball, except everyone's more naked, and the dancing is sexier, and there's a lot more drugs. What is drugs? You know what? You wouldn't understand. It's a peasant thing. No, wait, this is perfect. If you can convince Liam and Polly to invite Miranda to the music festival, maybe she'll cover your ticket too. Okay. The party happens in the forest and there's no party virgins to be bewildered by it as it really a party. You know, guys, if we bring Miranda, her royal status will give us diplomatic immunity. Diplomatic immunity for what? Who is this one? I didn't hear a good sound. I shouldn't have done that. Damn it. Okay. It's another rejection, I think. Did you say virgin? What? Are you not? Of course I am. I'm a princess. And I'm sick to death of nefarious warlocks trying to tempt me into the woods to be sacrificed. Um, we're not warlocks. And even if we were, only a vanishingly small percentage of warlocks actually. Liam, now is not the time to get on your high horse about warlock rights. I knew it! You're all warlocks, all of you! I swear, it's enough to make me long for my deflowerment. With all of the trouble it causes me, it's hardly worth the ability to attract and imprison unicorns. Miranda stomps off in a huff, followed by like 15 unicorns. One of the unicorns offers to sell you a ticket to the festival, but you can't afford it. Lame. Minus two boldness and minus one smarts. Fuck! Fuck me. 
All right, here we go. Rejection time. Rejection time. Yeah, yeah. Rejection time. Yes. Let's go. You finally pluck up the courage and ask your beloved to go to Monster <gasps> Prom with you. I knew it. We had too many negative ones. Yeah, that's disgusting. I'm sorry. I'm seeing someone. Like, right now. Hey, you peasant! Miranda is just waving her hand to distract a passerby. I order you to rescue me from this awkward situation. See, I know him. <laughs> Don't well. miss me. Ugh, disgusting. Clearly, this was too much for you. You abandoned high school and spent the rest of your life designing a robot for sex purposes. Unfortunately, as soon as your robot lover got true AI, it rejected you. Ouch. Ouch. Miranda, most oblivious. Most likely to be Rasgard, the space goddess illusion in disguise. Karen, how's it going? Always love to see another Karen in here. That was a lot of events we got in this run. I'm good. I'm eating some really delicious cereal that I didn't expect to be good. So I'm pretty happy at the moment. Even though I got rejected by my fishy girl. Those six weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened. And it was wonderful. Miranda and Damien received an award from Smalltopia for their work as city planners. Smalltopia citizens still insist the award was fake, and they pray every day for the two of them to stop messing with their city. Liam owned his most admirable skill and got a job with it. He now designs Moment Graham filters. Scott turned out to be a genius, and because the most renowned mathematician in the country. What? What? You're the only one that gets away with calling me Karen. What, really? Really? Because it's too funny. It's too funny. I have to. <laughs> Just kidding. He became an athlete. Duh. Oh, yeah. He's still a bit of a simpleton, but as lovable and good-hearted as ever. I really thought they were serious for a second that he was smart somehow in this run. Yep. <clears throat> Okay. Anyone else gets told off? What do you tell what do you tell them? What do you, oh we gotta stop the music. We're gonna get oh, YouTube doesn't want me to play the song. Okay. Five new images in the gallery. What do you tell them when other people call you Karen? I don't think I've ever seen anyone else call you Karen, just me. I thought it said there was new ones. Oh, we haven't scrolled all the way down. Lady K or Lady Karen Gale or Karen Gale. Yeah, I guess if it wasn't a funny, so funny for the joke to me. Wow, Liam's really design is funny. Um, then I would say Karen Gale. Oh, cute. All right, there's just some good new gallery. Karen name because I got Karen meme too much. Yeah, me too. get Karen memed all the time. Okay, we're gonna do a short round. I think we're gonna do Dodgeball God, so we can do all the gym ones. And we're gonna do Outcast, where we choose a table with all the minor characters. This is our last run of Monster Prom. So for our last run, it's not going to be probably as many fun voices because I didn't have specific voices picked out for um, a lot of the minor characters, which is kind of reading. So maybe we'll pick some voices for them. <clears throat> It's 
like I had, yeah, me too, me too. It's like, I was Karen before. So like, whatever. It was one time, my mom texts me. I, did, I think this was a drunk text. She says, honey, I'm so sorry that I named you Karen for all of these memes. <laughs> I died, it was so, so cute. <laughs> all right, here we go. Sweet, sweet. All right. <laughs> Alright, I don't really care. We're gonna sit with minor characters. We need both of those achievements. The fruity flavor one's just too good, you guys. It's really good. Alright, we got president for the day again. Um. Let's do uh, taxes. Yeah. All right, what's this one? The coolest reality show would be 12 experts on the various arts of seduction living in a house where they must face a common challenge, seducing a potato into marriage somehow. Eat eight rich people fight in a weekly challenge to see who's the best at giving money to you. Oh, I love that one. People in positions of power must face all sorts of questions relevant to their field. If they fail, they lose their jobs and society wins. Let's do this one. Yeah. You find a genie in a bottle. You ask for whatever it wants. You can ask for whatever you want. What do you ask for? A rainbow you can eat. Him to not be so cliche, a genie in wishes so mainstream. His friendship. I don't ask for anything. I drink the genie from the bottle. I can grant my own wishes. Infinite confetti. Before asking anything, you try to negotiate up the three standard wishes. Ah, no, we're gonna ask for infinite confetti. Oh, that's Polly. I knew I loved Polly. I knew I loved Polly. When I'm picking with my heart, Let's I pick go. her. That day an epic dodgeball match takes place. Sorry, I shouldn't have taken that bite. Okay. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural born leader, plus two charm. After your eavesdropping on Miranda and Polly, waiting for the perfect moment to mentor your influx of online followers when- Greetings, my love. Oh, it's this guy. <laughs> Slaying an Overwatch, hell yeah. I sniped a sniper as a support and even my character was like, I thought you were the sniper. Ah, you got him. Got him. Never fear, my ladies. You need not fight over me. Him again. As royalty myself, I must say that even I find him to be, what's the term you use, Polina? Extra as fuck. Mm. Friendship between two beautiful maidens shouldn't be soured over one as handsome, rich, and humble as I. But worry not, my sweet summer salads. I have found the perfect solution to protect your feeble hearts. You shall both marry me. I've dealt with male entitlement before, but this is official next level. Yes. I am an interdimensional level, as our collective wedding will be as well. Lame. Yeah, not interested. Uh, what a commoner. You are hardly the first prince to seek my royal hand in courtship, and I don't see that you're bringing much to the table. Interdimensional table, and I'm the definition of marriage material. You'll never find a better suitor. I have a castle. I can defeat anyone in anything. I'll show you. I'll fight. Her. Um, is the interdimensional prince pointing directly at you? Why is your life like this? I can defeat you at any challenge. Name your weapon and prepare to lose. Miranda and Polly are watching you closely. Maybe you can skew the prince's challenge to really impress one of them. Yeah, he's a little gross. Every time he's come on, he's um he's basically tried to, uh, to flirt with one of the high schoolers. And uh, based on some other scenes, I know that he's uh, an adult character <laughs> and they call him out on it constantly. So, uh, so it's very funny. He's definitely supposed to be the gross guy. <clears throat> you know what would be wild? Naked fencing with live weasels instead of swords. As a royal, you must fancy yourself pretty clever. So let's see you win at losing. Um, this one. Okay, we got a good sound. It's true. Royalty is very clever. I know, because I'm royalty. Very well then, let us proceed with the challenge. The series of trials begins. You each post selfies to Moment Graham. The prince instantly gains 12 followers and you lose 10. 
Round one goes to the home team, it would appear. Sorry about your unfortunate face. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Next up are classic feats of athleticism. The prince kicks your ass up and down at archery, fencing, and bumper cars. What? How is he good at everything? Finally, you engage in a stirring round of Monopoly. The prince wins with six moves? That's not possible, he's cheating. Ha <laughs> ha! Normally, Monopoly might last days, but I, with my incredible skill, have managed to win at once because I am a winner. Now, surely you have proven yourself. I have proven myself a worthy winning groom for both of my blushing Loser. brides. Dude, this competition was to win at losing. By winning everything, you actually lost. What? No, it cannot be. Uh, disgraceful. Yes, it is. Sadly, even though you are of royal blood, it would seem as if you were the biggest loser of all. No, curse you confusing semantics. The prince lets out a heartbroken sob and disappears in a burst of heartbroken light. You may have made yourself look like a total loser, but at least your friends aren't both marrying that douchey prince. Plus two smarts and plus one fun. All right, we're gonna sit with the side characters. All right, we can do the wolf gang or the cat. We're gonna sit with the cat girl. Give me your money. <laughs> Let's face it, you're probably gonna end up losing your money in some stupid way anyway. Why not spend it here first? It's called just being smart. Okay. Let's do an event. Okay, do we do the blanket with two holes? Do we do a corpse? Or do we do an erotic fanfic about dragons? This is, all of those will get us an event ending. And we have seven money, so we can actually get, oh, I know, we gotta get this one. We gotta get this one, because we've got seven money instead of five money like we normally start with. Okay, so we're gonna be strategic. This no one. Refunds. Have a good one. I wonder if it's possible to date the cat, cat girl. I don't know. All right, Jim again. Epic dodgeball admits the battle. You spot a fellow player that seems utterly discouraged. She thinks she's not worth anything at dodgeball and she attempts to throw a ball at herself. You explain to her the many ways you think she's unique and wonderful while also defending the many pleasures of life. With your help, she's capable of finding reasons to keep playing and gains a sense of self-worth. You gain plus one BFF. Sadly, she's not, that's, she's not part of this game so that beautiful friendship will take place off screen and we get plus two charm. Later, you hear some kind of muffled squawking and you see that Damien's backpack seems to be thrashing violently. Yay, Karen is here. I've been waiting all day to show some of Damien's cock. Hmm. Miranda, do you ever listen to yourself? Miranda pulls Damien's cock out of her backpack and the rooster begins preening himself contentedly. I think we did see this. Isn't he the isn't he the sweetest little thing? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna use him for cockfighting. Specifically, we're going to have him cockfight the cockfighters to teach them a lesson about why you shouldn't make cocks cockfight. Now we just gotta find a way to make sure our cock wins. The anti-cockfighting cockfight. How many times can you say cock? <clears throat> that fanfic just brought back trauma from finding out what bad dragon is. Ah. You mean trauma or joy? I think you mean joy. <laughs> um, lift your rooster spirits with romantic pros. I'll give your cock a cock ring. This cock isn't an expert on violence. You are Dean. Go undercover as a rooster. I think we picked this one. No, we had him go undercover. Okay, so we're going to pick this one. Oh, that's the sweetest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. I shall give our noble fighter my royal blessing. Here, darling, precious rooster, take this ring from my royal family. And now that it's on the cock's claw, it's a cock ring. And I'll have to use the same trick to give an octopus ring to an octopus and a ghoul ring to a ghoul. Miranda, please don't go around announcing to people that we put a cock ring on the cock together. How majestic. Why ever not? Surely this is an accomplishment to be proud of. And they're off with their rooster. You keep them in your thoughts, hoping things will turn out well. Later, you see an article in the newspaper entitled Local Cock Wins Cock Fight Against Cock Fighters. All animal cruelty ended forever. Yay. I mean, trauma, those things look like they hurt. I, I think some of them are meant to be decoration. <laughs> Miranda even gives a shout out to Karen. She likes you. She really likes you. Plus two creativity and plus one fun. Fantastic. Let's go. 
Let's go. All right. Jim. All right. Epic dodgeball. Many people fall during the battle. You can't take any more, so you valiantly go straight to the other team's leader and start negotiations for a truce. After hours of intense diplomacy, you commit to an agreement. What an unexpected twist. Plus 10 righteousness. <laughs> but this game is so wrong in so many ways that you'd be lucky if you could do anything with that. So plus two, plus two charm. You go wandering down the hallway, reading Dag Dragon Heat as discreetly as you can, which apparently isn't very because Polly and Vera clock this immediately. Uh, why are you actually reading erotic fanfiction about dragons? Yes. Because we love Dragon Heat. I'm all about the 19th century Russian literature, but a ghost girl can't say no to some erotic fanfic. Am I right? I've literally been working on my Morgana von Restreach cosplay all week. Don't worry about Rye. <laughs> Speak for yourself, Polly. I don't, I never. Okay, if I'd already read a Dragon Heat. But I don't go around just telling people. <laughs> We're clearly safe with her. A fellow Dracophile can always be trusted. Are you sure? I mean, anyone in Dragon Heat must have a wicked mind. Nine, 297 chapters in counting? It still manages to amaze me. With all new levels long. Yeah, right. I fucking love it. Yeah, I must admit, I'm a little bit vanilla when it comes to fave chapters. Mine is the one where Harold McDonghard, Horace the Hydra, and deranged Draco Delacourt have a rest in an inn after a choking bay adventure only to discover that they have just one available bed. There's only one bed. The classic fanfic trick that never fails. <laughs> yeah, that one was good. I personally prefer the one where Banish Dressa unmasks her masked savior after a passionate kiss, only to discover it's herself. And then they totally bang. I'm not a fan of time travel, but sign me up for some good self cest Amen. <laughs> what about you, Karen? What's your favorite story arc? Nothing to worry about. You'll be revealing your inner kinks to us. No pressure. Oh god. Um, what do I choose? S easy, the sex caliber arc where they want to discover the chosen one who can control the mythical sex caliber dildo. And they have a super orgy so everyone can have their turn with the dildo. What about this exclusive chapter I've written myself? Fanfic of the fanfic. Um, I don't know. Let's choose sex caliber. Oh, bad sound. Oh, the sex caliber arc. I mean, it's a good one, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of controversial, don't you think? The great King Felatio III organized the sex caliber trial where everyone tried out the sex caliber dildo, and it was all good and fun, but it turned out the legend was a lie invented by the king who just wanted to have an orgy with everyone. So even if everyone enjoyed it a lot, it's gone to a very long and necessary conversation about consent with you, Vera, here. Also, they never depicted any proper orgy preparation. And being the literature buff I am, I can understand the writer didn't want to spend time there, and the reader should assume it happened, but still, it's kind of problematic too. Nothing as good as a good old orgy, but not so good if it lacks the correct preparation for health and hygiene. Dunno, Karen, I'm not sure what to think of the sex caliber arc as your favorite in Dragon Heat. There was a wrong answer, you guys. They lied to me. We can assume she just wanted to play cool and edgy to impress us. She failed. Yeah, boo. Don't go all try hard on us. There's nothing as sexy as being yourself. Agree. What if I really did like that arc? What if I did? And so they leave. Well, if you failed one, kind of difficult not to try. Oh, try too hard when romancing them. Since this is technically a dating sim. Well, damn. Let's go. <clears throat> okay, we're doing minor characters. We only have one money. We already bought that one. Okay, okay we're gonna go sit with the coach. You're hoping to enjoy your meal in peace, but coach seems to have a different idea. What's this? Eating regular food again? Fruits, vegetables, meats, dairy, blood. These are all parts of a complete lunch, sure. But you're forgetting the most important food group out there uh, of all, dietary supplements. Don't you worry now, old coach never goes anywhere without some emergency vitamins. Here, take your pick. It would be rude to turn him down, and who knows, maybe you'll gain some benefit after all. Coach holds out two pill bottles. Oh God. Palomino Gold 25 Horse Supplement for shiny coat and luxurious mane. 
a completely black bottle emblazoned with the Chinese character for party time. Wow. Wow. Party time. You swallow the entire bottle of mystery pills before Coach can stop you. Whoa, slow down there, champ. The old woman who sold these vitamins to me told me they were basically poison. I bought them anyway because, as we all know, whatever doesn't kill you makes you... You wake up 36 hours later in the middle of an impassioned speech to the student council about dolphin sex. You have no idea what happened during those 36 hours, but you have a new tattoo, and everyone keeps calling you Deep Six Nine. Okay. You gain plus four fun. There's a fanfic there. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, we're going to the gym again. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. At one point, you're about to be eliminated by a player from the other team. But suddenly, you convince him not to throw the ball at you with a heartfelt speech of importance of everyone's lives. The player bursts into tears, and you take advantage of the moment of weakness throwing a ball at him. You lose minus five mercy, a stat that might be useful in Monster Prom sequel, but isn't now. And you gain plus two charm. Later, you're carrying around your precious dragon heat when you've spotted by Miranda and Damon? Wow! Dragon heat? I love it! Also, you may not know this about Damien just by looking at him, but it turns out that he, too, is a hopeless romantic at heart. <laughs> Are we reading the same series? I'm in it for the Dragon Dong, Mary. Nothing so bad yet is so good as a billionaire dinosaur made me gay. Damien, you are being utterly foul. Don't profane the deep emotional connection between Harold McDonhard and Godiva Galantina. Deep emotional connection? Is that why the latest chapter ends with Harold finally boning Godiva, and then she wakes up to find him gone? The cliffhanger must be entirely misleading. People simply don't abuse each other's love and trust that way. I worry about you, Mary. I really, really do. I just desperately want to know what happens next in Dragon Do you think Harold is capable of being so mean-spirited? Um, true art imitates life. Let's look at Damien's sexy messages to see what he's capable of, shall we? Harold may or may not be a scoundrel, but love is alive and well. Let me take both of you on the greatest three-way first date ever to prove it. We're, okay, we're choosing this. We're choosing this. Oh, that was apparently a Miri answer. Okay. A date? In the midst of a school day? Why, my duty, responsibility, and breeding say no. But my heart says yes. I have a midterm in Interdimensional Peace 305, so anything's better than that. Oh, huzzah! I do love being courted. Let us flee to the absolutely most romantic day that has ever happened to me, ever. Yay! That's a high bar. Luckily, you're a romance expert, having spent literally all your school days planning for prom, which is a single night of the year, instead of paying attention to the studies that might benefit you later in life. You show up with chocolates, flowers, and a bevy of myrrh slaves for Miranda, and a pack of matches and a gallon of gasoline for Damien. The three of you go on an absolutely splendid date, during which Damien only commits a few murders, plus two fun and plus one charm. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. All right, week three. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, we're going to the gym again. Yes, epic dodgeball match. The match is so intense that both teams are so into it that you decide to raise the stakes by betting part of your charm against part of the other team leader's charm. That commitment amazes your whole team and their spirit is fueled by determination. Finally, you win and take plus two charm from the other team's leader. She's now a bit less fabulous. You notice Liam and Miranda talking to the coach. They actually seem to be enjoying the gym for a change. Something must be terribly wrong. You go over to see what it is. Well, now I'm all for inspiring athleticism in the hearts of our youth, but allowing you to make it your own sport seems a bit unorthodox, don't you think? Oh, but ordinary sports are ever so dull and unrefined. I'm sure we two could come up and do something much better. I've already got an idea, actually. I've spent, I've had an idea for a sport since before there even were sports. I call it art. No teams, no rules, just pure creative expression. I'll be the quarterback, of course. Art? Brilliant! We'll play it with watercolors and sequins, and there shall be a sports bard, a goalie laureate, and... It's so good to see you kids getting enthusiastic about wholesome physical exercise, but I gotta say, art doesn't really sound like a sport. Why it doesn't have the word ball anywhere in it? That's easily solved. We'll call it art ball. 
Oh, well, yes, obviously that's much better. But let me ask you this. How do you score points in art ball, huh? Liam and Miranda both look at each other totally stumped. Their dreams hang in the balance. Time to step in. Obviously, the sports bar assigns inspiration kicks to the metaphysical linebacker who scores 11 points for each poem he successfully publishes in the Atlantic. <laughs> Don't you read the rule book? <laughs> this one, this one, this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the bad sound. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, there's a rule book? Well, that changes everything. Can I see it? You didn't plan for this. You panic and hit coach in the face with a tennis racket. Hey, that didn't feel like a rule book to me, sport. He spotted the ruse. Retreat! Retreat! <laughs> Liam and Miranda flee, leaving you to face coach. Coach isn't mad. He's just disappointed that your tennis swing is so weak. To help you out, he assigns you 200 push-ups and 100 deep bicep curls. Minus two fun and minus one boldness. Well, damn. Well, damn. <clears throat> Let's go. Oh, we can talk to this person. This is the Slayer. You find the Slayer sitting alone at a table. Is she even a student? Or this is impossible. Wait, you're choosing to sit with me? For some reason, no one ever intentionally sits next to me. I usually have to ambush them and threaten to kill them. I wonder why. It's a mystery. Anyway, I'm really happy to see you. I mean, I'm flattered that I mean, actually, uh, wouldn't give a shit about your n under normal circumstances, but today I'm totally on a quest. Yeah, that's right. I'm not emotionally vulnerable. I'm just on a quest to slay the werewolf of Wall Street. And I need a monster sidekick. You're gonna help me, obviously. I just need to know what your class is. Are you a fighter, a mage, a cleric? Out with it. Oh, you're something much better. You're a gun haver. <laughs> I'm a gun haver. A gun haver? Is that even a class? Practically everyone has guns. You reveal just how many guns you actually have. Holy shit, how can you even carry that many guns? And why are you allowed to have them at school? You have your rad biceps to thank for the former and monstro plus is strong second amendment protections for the latter okay well do you have silver bullets werewolves are only vulnerable to silver bullets man there isn't a color of bullet that you don't have well um all right let's uh go on an adventure then you travel together to wall street where you shoot the wolf of wall street with your guns all right then mm, thank you and now i'm gonna go ahead and run screaming away from you if that's all right it totally is. God bless Monsteropolis. <laughs> Plus four boldness. Evening time. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Um, what were we doing? We were doing the gym, right? Yes. Yeah. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place, but the match isn't as important as the human interactions within it. You're at your peak when you decide to go for the overkill and wink at some of your teammates. He's totally mesmerized. It's the most epic wink ever. Damn, you know how to win over people's hearts. Plus two charm. Yeah, that's the best class. That's the best. That's the class you should always have when you play in a fantasy game. You're doing the thing that gives you the most life, reading Dragon Heat, when you are approached by Scott and Liam. Aha, a fellow connoisseur of the Dracophile arts. Here, Scott and I are experts on the topic and unexpected an unexpected duo. Hooray! Yeah, Liam and I are fandom buddies. We love to discuss the things we love on our favorite stuffs, wikis, and forums. We're the best fandom buddies, even if we don't always agree. Like when the, like when the Starko and Markapu thing. Are they making fun of the streamers? I think they are. Okay, first let's be clear. I engage in passionate fandom conversations only as an ironic way of celebrating low culture, which I truly despise. Second, for the hundredth time after spending years in Hecapoo's dimension, Marco is now actually in his 30s, so it isn't right if he dates a 16-year-old girl. Oh my gosh, shut up, Leo. These details matter, Scott. Think how wrong it would be for me if my 400 years to date people from this school if all of you were actually teenagers, instead of being much more convincingly in your 20s, or much more conveniently in your 20s. Oh, so they're not even teenagers? Oh, they're not even teenagers? And, and we made fun of that, that one guy for flirting with the teenagers? The fuck? Anyway, enough meta discussion. Scott and I here are in a situation. Even if our opinions differ, we agree our opinions are superior in comparison with the rest of the strangers on the Dragon Wiki. Yes to that. Liam is here, like, super smart, and I'm a good boy, so my ideas should be good too. But people on that wiki can be really mean sometimes. We need to gain their respect so we can convince them to be good boys too. Scott is right. We need to somehow earn the role of moderators so we can show all of those lesser beings who's boss when it comes to the Dragon Heat fandom. But how? 
I'm sure you'll give us an absurd yet effective idea for the solution, as can be expected from good old Karen. Okay, let's ask them nicely if they can stop behaving like internet trolls instead of surfing. <laughs> let's ask a powerful, let's write a powerful fanfic on the Dragon Heat wiki where you're depicted as a coolest user who should be respected. Both of those sounds really stupid. Both of those sound really stupid. Let's do the self-indulgent one. Yeah, this was the best. Uh, yes, let's fight wielding art as our weapon. Yeah, weapons are fun. Liam opens a new document on his laptop. Come on, Karen, amaze us with your fanfic magic. Oh, dang, you never thought you were going to be the one doing the writing. You weren't prepared for this. Let's see what happens. Liam and Scott read as you write. Liam and Scott and Karen were very cool and very nice, and they lived in the Dragon Heat Wiki Community Kingdom. And they were so very cool and so very nice. This, <laughs> this has Ebony Ravenway vibes for sure that everyone said, hey, Liam and Scott and Karen are very cool and very nice. We should make Liam and Scott and Karen our monarchs. And so Liam and Scott and Karen were kings of the Dragon Heat Wiki community kingdom because they were the most very cool and most very nice in the kingdom. Then everyone became centaurs and they had centaur sex. <laughs> now you're just writing pages and pages of centaurs. Oh, it's Liam talking. Now you're just writing pages and pages of centaur sex. It's perfect, right, Liam? I like the part where she said the three of us were very cool and very nice. It's not perfect, Scott. Also, you can't use centarfication just because. Centarfication is a very delicate fanfic tool that needs to be used under the right circumstances. I think Karen was just trying to fool us into reading her extremely dirty centarfication fic. So not cool. Uh, she almost fooled me by saying we were very cool and very nice. That was not very cool and not very nice. Very not cool and very not nice indeed, my dear Scott. Why do you always have to turn into centrification when, when anxiety writing? Well, at least you got them to read your extremely dirty centrification fic. <laughs> minus two charm and minus one creativity. Well, damn. Monster prom is here. It's monster prom time. Okay. Now, there is an achievement for not taking anyone to prom. I guess I click on myself for that. So we're going to do that. Yay. Yeah, we're just going to go. Let's go. Let's go. You asked no one to prom. You told yourself you didn't need anyone. And you know what? On a theoretical level, that's completely true. But this just seems like a way of avoiding potential rejection. We all fear rejection, sweetheart, but it's part of life. Victory is for those who try, and you haven't. Prom night is here, and you can't help but wonder if you had a chance with any of your classmates. Yeah, forever alone, forever alone. Those who fail have at least tried, and you tonight, you fail in your own way without even trying, which has some kind of twisted merit in its own right. Doubts will haunt you till the day you die. Prom was a once in a lifetime opportunity and now it's gone. Oh no, wait, this is a video game. You can try and play again. So I didn't get the achievement for sitting at all the table with all of the extra characters, but I think it's because I chose the cat girl one time and she's the shop. So I think the shop doesn't count as an extra character. Lucky bastard. Best at being alone. At least I got some, at least it was a new ending. So we'll, we'll have some new pictures in the gal gal gallery. In the Galeri. Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendship, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened, and it was wonderful. Miranda got a job being princess of her kingdom, which was actually kind of her job already. Well, you don't see her complaining about it. Scott turned out to be a genius and became the most renowned mathematician in the country. Oh yeah, we've, we have saw that for Scott. Vera built an Oberlin empire into into endless greatness. They own a shameless number of companies. It's known that they're also into a lot of sketchy businesses, but no one does anything about it. I mean, who the hell would try to stop Vera Oberlin? For those three weeks, yeah, Monster Prom seemed larger than life. Yes, plenty of battles. And then we have to end the song so that I don't get demonetized again. They totally took off monetization on the video where I let the song play. They said, fuck you. Two new images. Okay, let's go look at them. All right, we got some of this. Did we have the Slayer before? I think we did. Anyway, what's down here? Ooh, okay. All right. Oz, Amira, Liam, and Polly, early concept. Yeah, Liam's early concept is really interesting. He's clearly like an art boy in early concept instead of like a, a total nerd. I mean, he is still kind of an art boy, but a little bit different. Hey, there's our girl. There's our girl. Hey, Polly. Hey, Polly. Hey, girl. She's definitely my favorite. She's definitely my favorite. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, you guys. Little dance break. All right. Goodbye, Monster Prom. This game is really good, you guys. Um, I highly recommend it. There's clearly lots of replay potential. Um, even though we have seen, seen some repetition, we have not seen a ton of repetition, to be quite honest. There has been, uh, you know, quite a lot of, of new things every single playthrough that we have done. And we've done every um, all four of these streams, a six-week playthrough and a three-week playthrough. So it's been a lot. It's been a lot. Um, I really enjoyed this game and it's got some sequels. So let me just, I'm just going to look them up real quick. Make sure I know what I'm talking about. Teen Go. Okay. Monster Prom. Yeah. So there's Monster Prom 3, which is Monster Road Trip. What's Monster Prom 2? Monster Prom 2 is Monster Camp. Okay, so there's Monster Prom 2, Monster Camp, and Monster Prom 3, Monster Road Trip. So y'all, I'll put these, I'm going to put these on my wish list. Y'all let me know if you're interested in me doing um, some playthroughs of the sequels, because I could definitely see myself doing those. If you're watching on YouTube, please uh, leave a comment down below. Let me know if you're interested. Monster Prom... Yeah, Monster Prom 3. There we go. Let's wish list that one as well. Okay. The game is really good. It's really good. Okay. All right. So, thank you guys so much for watching today. Um, if you enjoyed the stream today, you should give me a follow. Uh, we stream on Thursdays and on Saturdays, although I think I'm going to experiment next month with moving artistic license this thursday stream over to sunday instead i just think that's going to work better for my schedule sometimes streaming in the evenings is a bit challenging but the weekends are much more open and easier so i think we're going to do that and um also uh all of my vods are posted to youtube so you can always go back and watch past vods on there um, so you should definitely subscribe to my YouTube as well. If you would like to keep updated on everything that's going on, you want to follow my Twitter. That's where I'm posting all of my updates. There's some shit posts there too. So like, it's fun. It's not just updates. And if you want to make sure you get notifications for when my YouTube videos go, go up as well as when streams go live, you want to be in the discord, uh, because you can trust those notifications because I control them. Unlike YouTube and Twitch who you can't always trust to give you the notifications. All right, you guys, let's find somebody to raid. Let's find somebody to raid. Let's see. Let's see who is on right now that we have not, we have not raided. Charvana is on. I've been watching her a lot lady, lately and she's really funny. She was doing Cult of the Lamb. Right now she's doing, what game is this? Oh, it's that ghost game, Phantasmophobia. She's got, she's got stream raiders on as her category, but she does do stream raiders a lot. Anyway, let's raid her. Did I spell it right? There we go. I spelled it right. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you had a good time here at the theater today. I hope you enjoyed the show. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.